Hello and welcome to the School of Electronics, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science and welcome to our Open Days. I'm Russell Cain and I'm one of the academics in the school and particularly focusing on computing. So before we begin, let's consider what kind of a career and what kind of a world are you coming into if you decide to pursue a career in technology? So we'll have a look at what has been the, the past, how did we get here, what are we currently doing with technology and what is the future like and that's not too far away. So if we consider what our computers were like back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, unlike the computer that you probably have in your pocket, your mobile phone. Computers then, which were not as powerful as your mobile phone, took up entire rooms. We relied on a lot of technology to back those up using tips. But we have moved on from that and technology has evolved. Back then, if we wanted to communicate with another computer, we used an acoustic coupler. Now, in the image that you can see behind me, that acoustic coupler connected to your, mo your phone, not your mobile phone, but your landline. Even those phones are disappearing. And they were quite slow. Not what we expect today. The way we will end up going onto a website on our mobile phone and rapidly getting information. Back then, it did take a bit longer. And there wasn't as much information to be displayed. Our games, we still had games, but the games were more block in structure. They weren't as advanced as we have today. And that's because we have been able to build, these were our building blocks. These were the foundations of what we now use today, whether that is our phones and the communication systems that we have for our phones, whether that's our games and the advance in graphics, all of that has had a contribution from computing. Today, what are we doing in terms of our technology? Well, we can see robots appearing. So Boston Robotics, they're humanoid. You possibly have seen their dog before. But that technology, the way that we're starting to use that, the way that the, in a short period of time, those robotics have advanced, and the way that they are able to understand because of the programming and the computer processing that is going on in the background. When we come to virtual reality or Microsoft mixed reality, the hollow lens, and we can see also augmented reality. We now are seeing those in our own homes. We have those in games, but we are using them in the wider field. So something like the hollow lens being able to be used in surgery where people are starting to experiment with it in terms of medicine and communicating with others. They can hear, they can see, they can get information all through the headset. Similarly, people can end up getting an idea of the way buildings are being created. And so they can recreate them in the virtual world and they can explore those. And if different groups in different parts of the world want to communicate with those, if they're wearing those headsets, they can share that information. They can have that discussion. Our transport, the way that our transport systems operate, whether that is our trains, our public transport, whether that is our private transport, our cars, and the way we interact. And also the advancement in autonomous vehicles. There's different stages of autonomy. Ideally, in the future, we'll possibly end up with cars that are going to be a cabin to transport us from one location to another. So we won't have the steering wheel, we won't have the controls. But we're not there just yet. We do, though, have cars that are driving around our cities that are autonomous. They're driving by themselves. They're observing who is around them, what other vehicles are around them, where are pedestrians, where are cyclists. So we are moving with that technology. And all of that is something that you will build upon if you pursue a career in this field. What about the future? What does it hold? What advancements are there? 
Are we going to be flying in planes which fly by themselves? So whenever you get on board, will there be a flight crew? Or will that cabin be a computer that's processing and that is going to end up taxing that aircraft out, is going to take off, is going to end up flying the, the aircraft and is going to land it? You may already be saying, well, do our aircrafts not do that? Well, aircrafts do end up having autopilots, but the crew at the front are still ending up taxiing the aircraft out. They're taking off their landing. However, Airbus, just passed in June, ended up successfully testing their ATOL system. And with that, an Airbus ended up taking off, taxiing out, taking off and landing all through automation. So where those advancements are already starting to appear. Our food demands. What way will our food be in the future? And that again, people are already looking at that. Now you may be turning around and asking, why am I talking about food? Well, our computer systems are driving that. They're creating the environments. So they're observing the humidity. They're observing the light conditions. They're looking at how much water, how much food is required by those plants to prosper. And also, when should they be sown? So already, some stores are looking at, instead of those products being sent for quite a distance, instead, they may be grown outside or they may be grown in the store. Some cities are already doing experiments on this. Disju or disused underground systems they're putting that infrastructure in place. They're recreating an environment that those plants can succeed in growing. And we can structure that in terms of when they should be sown so that there is a constant supply of that food. In terms of our shopping, Amazon have just ended up announcing their Dash Cart. They've been exploring lots of new technology around how people may shop in the future. And it's not possibly all online, but there's some of their stores and particularly this new concept that they have with the Dash Cart allows you to go around the supermarket, put your produce into the uh, trolley and you leave. The trolley is a smart trolley. So it observes what have you put in. It knows the price of that. It even with fresh fruit and vegetables can weigh them and work out the cost. You end up taking your cart out through a special lane and your uh, Amazon account will be charged. So we have a real interest in the way that technology is advancing. So we need people that are going to continue that. All of these structures, just like the people that developed the games in the past, that built those large computers, they led the way. We have built upon that. We have advanced it. And people have to now take on that challenge and progress with that. So that's what you may be doing. That may be the career that you want to pursue. So let's consider then Queen's and how can that journey commence for you? Well, with Queen's, we do a lot of work with companies. So you may end up that you're going to meet companies either giving guest lectures. You may have a project that has been set by a company you may end up attending an event that's been run by a company. And that's important that you build up those skills and that you're aware of what is happening. What is the new techniques that companies are using? So we have a professional advisory board. And with that, we meet with a number of companies throughout the year. And we talk about what's coming down the line. What are going to be the requirements for graduates in five, 10 years time? And our courses evolve to meet those demands. We also have a peer mentor scheme so that if you join us as a first year, the peer mentors are able to assist and communicate with you because they are students, their second years through to final years. So these are people that have just been ahead of you. They can talk about courses. They can talk about jobs that they have applied for. Maybe they've already been out on placement if they're a final year student and they're able to talk about what was their experience of that placement. So it's a fantastic resource to be able to communicate with those students. So let's consider the courses. 
We've got a number of courses that we deliver. We've got our computer science course, we have our software engineering course, our computing and information technology course, and our business information technology course. So let's look at those in a bit of detail. So first of all, our computer science, and that's offered in two flavors. It can end up being our MEng pathway, or it can be our BSc pathway. The MEng has a higher demand for entry level, and then it takes an additional year to complete. And that is because you're ending up, particularly in your last years of the course, are working with our research teams. You're going to end up, your project is going to be focused around a research area within the university. And for that, computer science, what's the difference in terms of the different pathways? Well, computer scientists, I always think of being the inventors. They're going to come up with the new algorithms, new algorithms for cybersecurity, new algorithms for compression, new algorithms for the way that we process data. So they're going to evolve those new techniques. We have our computing and information technology course, and this is delivered as a BSc. That program will end up that you'll be really starting to think about systems and how those systems are put together. So if you think about some of the large companies, everyone needs email. Everyone needs access to the system. But someone has to look after that. Someone ends up having to issue those emails. Someone has to set the different security levels for people to get access to the systems. And that's where people that are studying computing information technology may end up going into those roles. They may think about the system administration. And there's programming required there. If you're in a company with two and a half thousand to three thousand people, you're not going to manually start to input everyone's email address or level of access. Instead, you want to automate that. You'll want to run scripts that will process that. So you need to have an understanding of coding. Our business information technology, slightly different to our other three pathways. And that's because this is a course that we share with the School of Management. So with that, you have half your courses, the technology side of it, in the School of Electronics, Electrical Engineering, and Computer Science, and the business side within the management school. So for someone like this, who may be considering this pathway, they may have an interest, let's say, in project management. They want to deal with clients. So they need to understand the client's business needs. They need to then to be able to go back and talk with the technology teams and have an understanding of what are the terms? And take those terms and put them into terms that are understood by the business and the business can understand the impact that that technology solution may deliver. And then our software engineering pathway. Again, this is delivered in two flavors. It's the B-Eng and the M-Eng. Plus, with software engineering, how does it differ, let's say, to computer science? Well. Software engineers, I end up liking or like to think about uh, that they are very much going to end up evolving, not just building new systems, such as our computer scientists are doing, but instead they are looking at how can those be applied. So they are aware of what new techniques are out there, but they're then applying those techniques to give the correct solution for their clients. So those are just a quick overview of the different courses. Now, while I'm on software engineering, there is another flavor to software engineering, and that is through our apprenticeship. Now, currently, there's an apprenticeship with PwC. We're talking to other companies as well. But with that, you can end up looking at a different technique in terms of how you may end up approaching university. So consider that as another option. So let's consider those pathways and just how they're structured. Stage one has a common first year for our computer science, our software engineering and our computing information technology students. 
The difference is then because business information technology students are only studying half our modules that they end up having their own pathway through their progression through first year, second year and final year. Stage one, stage two. After stage two, you're going to end up going out on placement. Placement is such an important part of the degree because that is where you're going to start applying the skills that you have developed in stage one and stage two. You're going to see how they are utilized by companies, how they're used within the IT sector. You're going to have the opportunity to deal with clients and see how clients end up looking for technology to solve problems that they have within their own businesses. So it's a great opportunity. And with that, that is something that we will assist you with. We have a dedicated careers team. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because there is a talk from our careers team. So look out for that during our open days. And they'll outline what they're doing within careers. You then come back into your final year. And in your final year, you'll undertake a project. Depending on the course that you're pursuing, that depends on what type of project that you're going to undertake. If you're on the MEng path, pathway, that's for computer science or software engineering, you do have your next, your final year. So that's additional stage. That's why you have, there's a stage four for the MEng students. So it's just an overview of progression. So what's the first year experience like? Well, the first year is all about you starting to build your skills for the IT sector. You have great opportunity to meet other students. You probably work within teams in some of your modules. And that is very, very important because the IT sector is about working within teams. You may be working within teams in the same office. You may be working with teams that are global. So some of your team may not be in the same office. They may not even be in the same city. They may be in a different time zone in another part of the world. And it's important to build up how you work within a team, how you communicate, how you share information. So that is something that you start to experience within first year. So first year starts to build your skills. As you can see, programming is a big part of our courses. Now programming, some people will turn around and say, well, I've already got experience of programming, so do I start from stage one again? And no, with programming, we have two flavors of it. If you already have experience of programming, then one of our courses or one of our modules will end up being able to allow you to progress further with that, to start developing your techniques. If you've never done programming before, do not worry because we have a module for that as well. And that will end up taking you from the basics of programming and build up your knowledge and your skill set. And that's what really first year is about. It's getting you a flavor, as you can see from the list here, it's getting you a flavor of the different types of areas within IT. So it lets you start to see where are the areas that you're particularly interested, where are the areas that you would like to take forward and explore further. So there's a lot of different areas to really think about within first year. So it's not all just about those modules and sitting in those lecture theatres and those labs. There's a lot of extracurricular activities. And I have to say these are very, very important. These are things for you really to get engaged with, to try out. So that may end up being that the Google International uh, Hash Code Hub. And we held that in the building, in the computer science building. And that allowed people to participate with other competitors in Google globally. We have also ended up holding the Allstate Cyber Challenge. We just finished that back in February. And that was over a number of weeks and people were ending up trying techniques within the whole area of cybersecurity and that was being led by Allstate. Allstate coming in on site and discussing that. And then there was a challenge at the end for people to participate in. There was a Microsoft Accessible Hackathon, and that 
ending up allowing people to work on a problem for a client. How do people access systems? How can we make an improvement on people's lives? How can we assist them? So there's lots of things to end up trying out. We also have a lot of things that we do within Queen's Computing Society. Queen's Computing Society is a society that's run by students and they run a number of activities as well. So they run their Meet the Graduates. Students that have graduated from our school that are now out working in the IT sector, returning and chatting to students about their experiences and what they're doing with the knowledge and skills that they developed whilst at the university. They also have Crack the Code Club and that is something that they run each week giving challenges, preparing people for interviews. So that builds upon what you would end up doing with the careers team. This is student led, so fantastic opportunity. There's the evening with tech, maybe you've been along to that. We hold that in November. And that's a fantastic opportunity to come along and play with the technology that we have. Usually a lot of new games that are coming out, we have them in the building for people to try out and also different bits of technology as well. So get involved. If you're going to join us, think about that part of it. It's not just always about the modules and what we do in lectures and labs. It's these other areas where you're networking with other people. You're exploring what's happening with new techniques and that's fantastic then to be able to go into an interview and particularly for placement or your graduate job and be able to discuss what you've applied. So what do you end up doing in a lab? What do you end up learning in a lecture theatre? That how you applied it at these extracurricular activities. We also have our Tech Tuesday lunchtime exchanges and that's where companies come in and they talk tech. And with that, it's an opportunity to see what are companies doing with the technology? What's new in those fields that they're working in? So again, opportunity to find out the groundbreaking technology that's going on and the great things that are happening within Belfast, Northern Ireland and the wider field. So I mentioned Queen's Computing Society so let's find out some of the things that Queen's Computing Society do. So there's a lot there that Queen Computing Society do. So think about joining them if you join us. 
fantastic opportunity that's something that is run entirely by students. So if you join us as a first year, apart from all those modules, all those events that take place, there's also then support for you. So as you come into first year, there's an induction event that takes place. So with that event, introduce you to staff, introduce you to your students, and it allows you to meet people, to discuss things with them. Also through that induction week, there's the opportunity to check that your email is working, that you're able to log on to your systems, okay, your computer systems that are in the, the labs. And a way for you end up to, to settle into the school. You're also assigned to a member of staff. This can end up not just being one of your lecturers, maybe another member of staff, but it's someone that you can go chat to. If you have an issue, you could go and talk to them about it. Maybe you're thinking about applying for a summer job and you just want to chat to them. That's an opportunity, meet up with them. They'll probably contact you and reach out, but they're always there for you to be able to, to talk to. We also, as I mentioned earlier, our student peer mentoring scheme. And these are our second year through to final years who are there to support you. They're a group of students who will be able to chat to you about what are their experience. They may end up running short courses as well to support you. So get to know the peer mentors and the support that they provide. And there's also support in your practical sessions and your lab classes. We have a number of large labs within the, the building. And so that from having a lecture, a number of the, the modules will end up then having lab sessions where you can go and you can apply that knowledge. And there's someone there to chat to you about the way that you're engaged with them. So there's a range of different activities. We also have a number of scholarships, and this is something that you would apply for when you join us in your first year. They're sponsored by a number of companies. And with that, if you're successful in getting one of those scholarships, it can work out around 25,000 for your degree period. And that is because there's different things that they'll organize. It may be that there's a summer internship after your first year. They may take you in over Easter to spend some time with them and that they organize a placement for you. So it's a great opportunity to end up working and understanding how a company operates and getting support from that company. So think about that if you're coming along to us. So I've talked a range of different things there, but here we have an opportunity to hear from some of our current students. Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm a final year software and electronic systems engineering student at Triple ECS. When choosing my degree, it was a toss up between computer science and SESE. And what helped me decide was my curiosity for understanding what technology is in devices we use today. And that is what SESE is all about. It's a mixture of computer science and electronic engineering. Not everyone settles into university life as quickly as others. And it took me until around my second year to ultimately get used to being in university. And since then, I've done a range of extracurricular activities, including course rep, peer mentoring, the Swan Diversity Committee, school rep, uh, QCS, so the Queen's Computing Society, and Computing Champions, which is teaching Key Stage 3 students how to code. My degree has led me to work in a number of firms, both large and in a startup environment. And at that point, I decided that the electronics route wasn't for me. And I took more of the computer science route. And I'm looking to become a data analyst and machine learning engineer. And that goes to show that your degree at Queen's and your course is really what you make of it. And there's a ton of flexibility in job roles out there. If I could go back and tell myself one thing, it would be to get involved sooner, uh, jump right in with two feet into university life and enjoy your time at university because those years fly by. Hi, my name is Theo and I'm a current second year student at Queen's University Belfast studying computing and information technology, also known as CIT. And today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about why I chose CIT. So I chose CIT because I have quite a keen interest in the likes of networks and cybersecurity 
Uh, when I was looking over the pathways available to me, I thought that CIT would be the best option as some of the module choices later on in second and third year contain things like systems admin, network administration, and cybersecurity modules, all of which are quite interesting to me. Um, and aside from that, I also quite liked how CIT also does contain some core programming and software development as well. Um, and uh, having the option as well to be able to transfer between pathways kind of solidified my choice in CIT because it means I'm not committed to doing a course that I may change my mind on certain aspects of like programming or networks. So like many first year students, uh, I was quite anxious about getting settled in to triple ECS. Uh, but my first piece of advice on getting settled in uh, would be get used to your surroundings. Um, walk around the CSB, the DKB, wherever you do your studies and study in them, uh, meet friends, uh, just hang around them and get used to being in that space because over the course of the year, and hopefully the next four years, you will be in that space quite a lot. And they are fantastic spaces to be in. They're fantastic for studying and socializing and especially events. Uh, and that brings me on to my second point, which is join a club or society. I couldn't highly recommend that enough. Um, in my first year, I joined the Queen's Computing Society in my first week. And then a couple of months passed and I applied for a committee place and got that. And now in my second year, um, I'm the new secretary. So get involved in a club. They throw on loads of events uh, covering loads of different kinds of topics from Dragon Slayers, video games or QCS with maybe more technical things like uh, Java courses and the likes of that. So join a club or society, meet new people because that's a fantastic way to do that. And just throw yourself in, really get involved and you will get more comfortable with walking the halls of the CSB or the DKB. So one thing I've learned over my past year at Queen's is that clubs and societies and general extracurricular activities make up so much of student experience and student life, especially for me. Um, now, I've told you already a little bit about Queen's Computing Society as uh, something that if you're on a triple ECS pathway, I highly suggest you get involved with. But I've also been able to explore my other passions. Um, I'm quite involved in charity activities and giving back. And uh, so I've been involved in a recently formed club at Queen's over the last year, uh, giving back to communities um, and also being able to meet lots of lovely like minded people. Um, you'll meet a lot of new friends in clubs and societies. I know I have and many people I know have. And it's a great way to just really get involved in student life at Queen's uh, and to feel more welcome and at home. So my first piece of advice for uh, new students going into a triple ECS pathway would be just get stuck in, uh, join clubs, uh, get involved in plenty of activities that are available throughout the year, uh, get involved in things that will mean that you meet new people and get new experiences. It sounds very general, but there are a load of things that will interest you if you're into computing. Just get involved with them, go to talks, go to lectures, um, and go to activities where you can do things like play games, uh, develop your skills, or, or just get to know Queens a bit more. Um, my second piece of advice, uh, particularly for uh, students that are based in the CSB, is that the Centra, just down the road, Mullen Road, does excellent chicken. So uh, be sure to check that out. And it's really cheap. It's three quid for like a pot of chicken. If they still do it when we get back from COVID-19, uh, that's a little early computer science secret. So uh, enjoy, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck uh, in your triple ECS pathway. Many thanks to the students for their words. I hope that that is something to inspire you. So all those different events that I've talked about, why not follow us on social media? If you're interested, whether it is our Even With Tech, whether it is those Tech Tuesday lunchtime exchange talks, there's a lot of things that we're going to be streaming this year and you'll be able to hear about those events and the opportunity to listen in on what some of those talks are by following us on Facebook and Twitter. So from me, thank you for taking the time to join us for this talk. Really appreciate that you've taken the, the time. I hope that you find that useful. Remember that you can chat to us. So. The facilities are available for you to ask questions. Please do reach out to us and we hope that we'll see you at either one of our events in the coming year or that we see you in computer science. Bye for now.